Every person has a fire in their heart, a fire that drives them to act when they are faced with a challenge. This fire is their desire for victory. A firefighting power isn't as strong as the power of calmness, restraint, and intelligence. That is the stoic philosophy or the art of steadfastness in the face of adversity. We want you to take a moment to think about what you're going to do when the enemy doesn't come at you with swords or mean words, but with actions that make you angry and want to fight. The eyes of a stoic. Imagine having someone who isn't particularly important in your life, but who knows exactly how to make you lose art. You might be tempted, want to fight back, or want to get even. But remember that true victory does not lie in defeating the enemy with brute force but in becoming the enemy, becoming more noble yourself by not allowing them to feel victory when touching your soul. You've really won. We'll go on a journey today to explore the 10 stoic principles that will help you destroy your enemy without resorting to bloody battles. Through the power of intelligence, patience, and steadfastness, let's learn how to become steadfast in our own eyes and the eyes of the world. Accept the challenge of watching this entire video along with the 10 principles we present to you if you want to join us on this journey. Comment, I accept the challenge, and let's move on to the first method. Seek the path that others share. Seeking common ground is a lost art in a world where conflicts and disagreements seem to be inevitable. Stoic philosophy, however, not only helps us find our way through the darkness of conflicts, but also works to create a future of peace and prosperity in such a context. It's when seeking common ground isn't about giving up or giving up on personal goals, but about using the power of empathy, cooperation, and understanding. We're not talking about turning adversaries into allies or turning conflicts into opportunities when we say we're aiming to destroy your enemies without using force or authority. Accepting that both sides have needs and goals that can be met through cooperation and understanding is where the common ground is found, not in confrontation. In order for all negotiations, conversations, and decisions to be built, it is necessary to seek out shared values. We don't just use logic in this process. We also appeal to people's hearts. We start to see the world through their eyes when we truly listen to and understand the other person's point of view. Then, instead of seeing an evil enemy, we see a person with hopes, fears, and desires just like us. Finding this common ground, we build bridges of empathy and understanding, laying the groundwork for a cooperative and peaceful future. It takes patience, courage, and a willingness to get past differences to find common ground. This is the path of the resilient, those who think that true strength comes from defeating oneself and finding ways to move forward with others rather than from defeating others. Imagine being in front of a very complicated painting where every stroke in detail tells a different story. That painting shows your enemy. You need to pay attention, be open, and dig deeper into what's going on under the surface to understand them. Why have they turned into your enemy is the question, not how to defeat them. The answer to this question not only shows you the way forward, but it also helps you understand that the real goal is reconciliation and progress, not destruction. Second, get to know your adversary better. Epictetus, one of the great Stoic philosophers, once said that events don't bother people as much as how they perceive them to be. This statement tells us that all conflicts or contradictions come from how we see and act in response to events. First, in order to truly defeat an enemy without resorting to violence, we must look deeply into their souls and hearts. This doesn't mean looking for weaknesses to take advantage of, but it does mean understanding what drives their actions. Every action is sometimes caused by a pain that hasn't been dealt with, a misunderstanding, or a psychological need that hasn't been met. Let's look at Marcus, a successful businessman, and Lucius, who is his rival. Marcus understands that Lucius' attempts to obstruct his projects are motivated by fear of losing something and uncertainty about the future, not malicious intent. Marcus does not give Lucius a hostile response. Instead, he decides to invite Lucius to join a group project where they can both learn from each other's strengths and work together to achieve a common goal. They learn to understand and value each other's values over time by working together. Marcus not only defeats an enemy, 
but he also turns that enemy into an ally, opening up a new chapter for both of them. This demonstrates that we can act to resolve conflicts without conflict by looking into the soul and understanding the underlying causes of others' actions. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The Lord also taught us about love and forgiveness. Not only is this moral advice, but it is also a practical conflict resolution strategy. We open the door to turning tense relationships into opportunities for growth and reconciliation by demonstrating love and understanding. By attempting to understand and meet the needs of others, including our enemies, we not only assist them, but also assist ourselves in overcoming psychological and spiritual obstacles, creating a favorable environment for everyone. Have you ever faced conflicts and found a solution? Do you have any specific examples from your life that you think are important? In the comments below, please share your thoughts and stories. Every contribution is valued because we know that every share will help our community learn and be inspired. Third, using humor in a smart way to diffuse conflict. There's truth to the saying, a smile is the best medicine. A good laugh can help you deal with stress, improve your mood, spark your creativity and make you stronger. Not only is it good for your physical and mental health, but it's also good for your relationships. Smiling brings people closer together and fosters intimacy. It's also a powerful tool in conflict management and stress reduction art. You can learn to apply humor and playfulness to calm down when emotions are high, whether it's with your partner, friends, family, or coworkers. You can also learn to communicate in ways that build relationships rather than break them. When conflict and tension rise, a little humor not only helps to calm things down, but it also creates a safe space where both sides can express their opinions without feeling threatened. To avoid offending or making fun of someone, you must choose your humor carefully and at the appropriate time. Take the role of a coworker named Lucas who is arguing with you about how to approach a project. It looks like there's no way out of the situation as it gets tense. You both remember a funny mistake you made with this project in the past at that very moment. You smile and decide to share it. Remember how we both forgot a very important step and almost messed up the whole system. Maybe we should check each step again, huh? The tension goes away right away. Laughing about a common mistake not only helps you and your coworker realize that everyone can make mistakes, but it also makes it easier for you both to seek solutions in a more positive way. When used correctly, humor can break down the protective barriers that people build around themselves during conflict. It helps people see the problem from a new perspective, sparks creativity, and helps them find solutions that they had never thought of. Humor acts as a bridge, helping us get past rigidity and opening up space for empathy and compassion. The battles we face are different. Some we choose, and some choose us. But being smart about which battles we fight is the key to inner strength and peace. It's a choice to confront what is worthy of our time, energy, and soul, not a refusal to confront. Fourth, be smart about which battles you pick. The importance of focusing on what we can control has been taught by ancient Stoic philosophy. Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius, who was also the Roman emperor, advised us not to waste our energy on things that we cannot control in life. The things we should work on instead are our actions and reactions. This principle forces us to evaluate the conflicts we face. Are they worth our time and energy? Do we actually have any influence over the outcome, or are we just caught up in the illusion of control? We create a thorough plan to choose our battles wisely by putting an emphasis on self-control. This doesn't mean we should avoid or duck every challenge. Rather, we should confront challenges and problems that are in line with our core values and have the potential for progress. Ask yourself, is this conflict within my control? Before engaging in confrontations, if you have any influence over the situation, consider that. Don't try to control it. Instead, think about letting go. The second question is, does this battle fit with my values? Determine if the conflict is consistent with your core beliefs and principles. It might not be worth fighting for if it goes against your values. The third question is, 
Can I approach this with love and forgiveness? Think about whether you can confront the adversary with empathy and understanding, aiming for a solution that works for both parties. Engaging in conflict with purpose and intention is a key component of choosing battles wisely. It's about recognizing that real victory comes from overcoming our own bad habits, not from defeating the enemy. With a heart full of love and a mind focused on what really matters, we can navigate our conflicts by applying wisdom. We value your perspective. Have you ever faced a situation where you had to decide whether or not to keep fighting? To help you build a more meaningful and peaceful life, please share your story or thoughts on how these lessons could help. Fifth, show empathy. For resolving conflicts in peace, compassion is a crucial tool. Marcus Aurelius said that we can make sincere connections and open the door to more fruitful conversations by validating and acknowledging the emotions of others, even during heated arguments. The story of Alex and Jordan, two co-workers working on a project, but frequently in conflict due to different work approaches, serves as an excellent illustration of this. Jordan favors speed and flexibility, while Alex prefers a cautious and thorough approach. The conflicts between them got worse over time, which hurt the team's work. But Alex decided to apply compassion instead of continuing the argument. In a meeting, Alex said, Jordan, I understand that you want us to progress quickly. And that's also my goal. But I'm worried that if we rush, we might miss some important details. I appreciate your dynamism and creativity. What do you think if we try to combine both approaches? Jordan's response was not only surprise but also gratitude. Jordan started to open up and value Alex's perspective after being acknowledged and empathized with. From there, they found a successful working method by combining Alex's attention to detail with Jordan's speed and flexibility. The story of Alex and Jordan shows that we can not only destroy enemies, but also turn them into allies through compassion. We create a positive and creative working environment by opening our hearts and genuinely attempting to understand others. Not only does compassion lessen tension and conflict, but it also gives us the courage to explore forgiveness. Sixth, being able to forgive. According to Marcus Aurelius and Stoic philosophy, forgiveness is not only a moral choice, but also a sign of a profound understanding of the nature of humanity and life. We not only act honorably, but also in accordance with natural law when we accept and practice forgiveness. Forgiving an enemy does not mean you accept or ignore what they did wrong. Rather, it means you recognize that every action is caused by the limitations and conditions that a person faces. By forgiving, we truly recognize the inherent flaws in humanity and give up the power that anger and resentment have over us. In the act of forgiveness, we take a seemingly counterintuitive turn giving up our desire for vengeance or self-defense. To forgive is to confront our own pain and the pain of others without passing judgment. This requires patience and tolerance. In this process, pain is turned into strength and anger is turned into understanding. According to Marcus Aurelius, forgiveness is a way to achieve the common good that should be the result of every human act. Through forgiveness, we not only create peace for ourselves, but also help create a greater sense of community, which has a positive effect on everyone around us. In the end, forgiveness gives us the opportunity to reaffirm our power. The enemy, whether they are an individual or a situation, is no longer in control. Getting back in control of ourselves doesn't mean beating someone physically. It means beating ourselves mentally, which is where our real strength shows. The highest expression of courage and strength in the search for inner peace and harmony is forgiveness, which is not just an act of weakness. In the face of life's challenges, the Stoic philosophy teaches us about fortitude and self-control. One of the most important lessons is the ability to recognize and maintain personal boundaries, a powerful tool to confront enemies without violence. This is not only a self-defense technique, but also a smart one, helping us keep our honor and self-respect intact in any situation. Setting boundaries, number seven. Setting boundaries is the highest expression of autonomy and wisdom because it is not only an act of self-protection. 
It is crucial to clearly define and steadfastly adhere to one's boundaries for those who seek to destroy enemies without resorting to combat. This is not only a sensible approach, but it is also incredibly humane, allowing us to uphold our moral standards and values without hurting other people. Understanding and accepting what is outside of one's control are key components of Stoic philosophy. Boundary setting in this context is not an act of rigidity or hockiness, but rather a sign of profound self-awareness and understanding of one's surroundings. A Stoic takes both logic and emotion into account when setting boundaries. While emotions deepen our understanding of the value of these boundaries for our existence and growth, logic helps us identify what truly matters and is worth protecting. In order to create an environment of mutual respect, we not only protect ourselves but also understand and respect the boundaries of others. Setting boundaries is a process that takes time and patience, as well as self-knowledge. On this journey, each step is not only a challenge but also an opportunity for personal growth. We not only gain respect from others, but also show self-respect and courage by upholding integrity and demonstrating steadfastness. In the context of Stoic philosophy, conquering enemies without destroying them by setting boundaries shows that real strength is found in defending oneself from harmful influences while creating an environment of mutual respect. As both sides respect the art and boundaries that need to be respected, this benefits not only the individual but also the other party. We hope you found these lessons on boundary setting from Stoic philosophy useful and insightful. Please like and share this video with people who need it if you find these messages to be helpful and want to show them the power of calmness, steadfastness, and autonomy. People who respect each other and live by the principles of Stoicism can help us build a strong community. Eighth, speak clearly and with calmness. In order to end relationships, we frequently discuss calmness. A process of enhancing one's willpower, calmness is more than just an art. When dealing with enemies or conflicts, this means not letting negative emotions dictate how one acts. Speaking clearly and calmly creates space for both sides to express and carefully listen to opposing viewpoints. This helps build a strong foundation for mutual understanding and reduces misunderstandings. Through the steps below. First, calmness. Take a deep breath and remind yourself of the fundamental principles of Stoicism which are that one can only control their own emotions and reactions. In order to avoid getting caught up in the negative energy of the situation, calmness helps us think clearly. Second, being honest. Clarity in communication not only helps prevent misunderstandings, but it also shows respect for the other party. Another way to show trust and loyalty to principles is to tell the truth in love. We not only solve conflicts but also build relationships by using a calm language and attitude. Stoicism views communication transparency as a crucial component of the art of spiritual life because it creates opportunities for reconciliation and forgiveness. It's freeing to let go of hate when we accept it and practice forgiving others. It also makes room for personal and spiritual growth. We often judge others quickly based on their conflicts and differences forgetting that there is a heart full of dreams and aspirations beneath the cold and confrontational exterior. We not only find a new way to solve conflicts when we choose not to fight with violence, but instead to appeal to our inner values, but we also open the door to respect and understanding between people. Number 9. Get to their core values. In every conflict, there is an opportunity to explore not only the nature of the conflict, but also the underlying essence of the parties involved. Stoicism's core values of wisdom, courage, justice, and peace open up an unexpected path for us. Resolving conflicts not through force, but by appealing to the inner art of the opposing party. Rather than trying to trick or trick people, this approach focuses on building mutual respect and understanding at a deeper level. We must first understand someone's inner values in order to appeal to them. Life experiences, cultural contexts, and personal goals all influence how people act and make decisions. For some, it might be loyalty or honesty. For others, it might be a strong sense of duty or a strong desire to be fair. 
To appeal to your opponent's deepest values, you need to connect with them on a personal level. This connection begins with an act of listening and empathy. We open the door to understanding others' perspectives, values, and what matters to them when we truly listen to them, not judge them or prepare a response. Marcus and Mike, who had been adversaries, had to work together on a big project. When they first started working together, it was hard because their relationship was tense. Marcus decided to end the conflict after realizing that continuing in this manner would hurt them both and the project. He approached Mike with an open mind and a willingness to listen, and he found out that they were both passionate about creating meaningful, high-quality products. Instead of competing for individual recognition, Marcus took the initiative to talk about how they could combine their strengths and skills to achieve common goals. This change not only helped them finish the project well, but it also built a professional relationship based on mutual respect and support, turning them from adversaries to strategic partners. A powerful stoic strategy for resolving conflicts without fighting is to appeal to inner values. To seek common ground, one must have patience, empathy, and willingness. By doing so, we not only destroy our enemies, but we can also turn them into allies, creating an environment where respect and understanding can grow. The art of compromise is number 10. It's not always necessary to confront an enemy with force or win every battle. Instead, we should seek and accept a compromise solution that will not only get rid of the source of the conflict, but also help us build stronger relationships with each other and with ourselves. First, compromising art necessitates a thorough understanding of the needs and perspectives of the other party. According to Stoic philosophy, this understanding must be put into practice through sincere listening and an effort to put oneself in the shoes of others in order to be put into practice. This respect doesn't mean we agree with everything they say, but it does mean we recognize the value and unique perspective of each individual, including our enemies. Compromise isn't always simple. It takes flexibility and willingness to give up some personal interests in order to achieve a better solution for both sides. Accepting less than ideal circumstances or lowering our own expectations may be necessary for this. This is viewed as a form of self-control in Stoic philosophy, where we control our emotions and desires to achieve a greater objective. Creating a win-win solution where both parties can feel satisfied is the ultimate goal of compromise, not blatant concession. This requires creativity, patience, and some courage to let go of old beliefs and seek new ones. We not only seek external peace, but also seek inner peace when we apply the art of compromise to conflict resolution. The core principles of Stoic philosophy, self-mastery, acceptance, and a deep understanding of the true nature of happiness and freedom are truly honored by accepting and practicing compromise. I hope you found some useful lessons to apply to your life after reading about 10 Stoic ways to destroy your enemy without fighting them. Stoic philosophy is a way of life that helps us understand that true power lies not in defeating others, but in conquering ourselves and building good relationships with the world around us. What do you believe about this subject? Your deep insights could help someone who is looking for peace and answers in their life. Feel free to write about your ideas and experiences in the space below. We can create a strong community where empathy and understanding are valued by working together. Enjoy this video. Please like and share it with your friends and family. Comment on your thoughts on the Stoic philosophy and how you apply it to your daily life. Last but not least, please subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss any of our videos. Keep watching for the videos that will be shown after this one. Follow the true spirit of Stoicism and build a meaningful and happy life. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next videos.